Or you're gonna get primal. It's not gonna be a primal scream. It's not gonna be too primal heavy. It might be a little primal, primal stream. <laughs> primal stream. Nope, nope. Eject nope. button. Eject button. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits. Doing the nightmare fuel all under Linux on all sides, joined every week by our man up north in Canada. Who has it's so it's so cold. Who only navigates with maps that are blank. That is one Jordan's thing. And there's Pedro together with you Hi. at home. And then there's Pedro live, helping us form cocaine <laughs> gold runs. Yeah, I should have just kept him muted, man. I could have had another one of those like smooth little intros like we did last week. <laughs> Go back and watch last week's intro. It was it, it for just, a full minute. Yeah, I just glided right through it, stuck the landing, and I'm like, oh, but Jordan can't talk. And I'm like, oh. that, 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 that's that, it's it's the greatest podcast. No one, people's mouths are moving, but no no sound. Oh no! Hey, beautiful people at home. So before we get going, we like to play a little bit of catch up. What's going on in our life organs? And I'm happy to report. Thank you, Google Photos. You know how you get like the, oh, this happened six years ago. This mm -hmm. happened one year ago. And it's like, what happened one year ago that could be out of whatever? Uh, Franken webcam, the Nikon D3400 that I got for 100 bucks because it didn't work as a camera anymore off eBay. It's the webcam. It's been going for a full year. And I think we only have a couple of dead pixels. So you can't really see them unless you look for them. I suggest you don't. That will drive you crazy. Has, has that fan lasted a year? haven't had the fan well i've had multiple fans I had that one like loud fan but now i have oh i got another little pink fan but yeah one pink fan is like drilled into the wall so it's just you know it's it's, it's just there to like funnel air into that that's thing all so it, that it's, you have to keep a light breeze on it because it was not designed to run for more than 30 minutes at a time uh new vids i, I want to mention this at the top of the show because uh pedro you will definitely attest to it the new YouTube interface is a nightmare to deal with, it is. to do anything. And it takes, for, I have like an afternoon set aside because you'll see a bunch of videos come out sometimes and you're like, where are these videos that were streamed on Twitch? It's because it is such a genuine pain in the ass. So, cause I got to fill them out, do that, put them in the right categories. Then I have to go over the monetization thing. Cause if I leave it to YouTube, YouTube will keep trying to put a billion ads in it. And that's not cool. I don't dig that. Uh-huh. So I'm just copying and pasting those. Those are in the announcement section in our Discord. Look in there to find the new hotness. You'll also get this show like two hours before it goes live to everyone else. Ooh. Because I'm like, hey, it's done Wednesday. Same thing. As soon as it's done, I just dump it out. And I won't have show notes or anything with it. But if you just want to watch the goodness. So keep an eye on that. And I was talking about that little doke. <laughs> we, we had a little, uh, man, I had to reshoot that. Second time because it was a uh, it's a USB audio DAC that does toss link out that you can hook into your Android laptop or anything like that. I did an entire segment through the whole thing, all the AR. Vo I called it Doku <laughs> because why not? And then I then I sit back. I legitimately like hmm, maybe I could pretend I was calling it Doke. Ooh, the entire time. yeah. Then, then I decided against it and I re-recorded it. But at the end, it had some issues. At the end of the video. I'm definitely go look in the announcements if you want to see the one unreleased video that is never going to be public. Uh, had some issues, emailed them, didn't hear anything back. You know, uh, it's like a Chinese fuck you manufacturer, and they wrote me back. I'm like, oh, we will ship you some new ones. I think mainly because I might have mentioned, hey, I'm trying to do a review on this damn thing that I bought out of pocket, and so. Pause. Best case scenario, they send me another one that's knackered, and I'm like, ah, stands, it goes out. Uh, really, the best case scenario, they get QA, and they're like, they send me a good one, and everything's gonna work. So, uh, that, uh, I, I gotta say, I think maybe the problem is you're you're calling it Doku instead of it's like say a name of Dakarot. Doku. <laughs> is that why it pulled a lightsaber on me? Yeah, and and then it turned into a giant monkey. Oh man. That's terrifying. Speaking of giant monkeys, what's new with you? Absolutely nothing. This You're week was a big, like hairy man. I am a big hairy man. I, I this week was just like 
brain fog. I don't I don't know what the fuck was going on. I could not accomplish anything. It was you 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 get you get the some time with the with the the depression where you're just like, I need to sit down and do this. No. No. I'm just gonna curl up in a ball. So that was my week. Well, you you did your performance was infinitely better in uh, Young and Blood. That's pro that's probably because I was sleeping and <laughs> I was while, 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 while curled up in my little ball on the floor, <laughs> I, I managed to take a nap. Yeah, I get bored, man. I like try to lay down. I'm like, oh well, what? And I find myself trying to do something. I'm like, nope, just get up, get to do a thing. Pedro. Yeah, basically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday Rabbi. for me were... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, No, Thursday. it was just those four. It was like work all the time. So I was basically done. Uh, but on Friday, I did manage to um, try and use the uh, the Tower of Pi. Ooh. Big thank you to um, Jill for the uh, the actual tower cooler. Uh, and it is almost usable as a desktop once you overclock the, um, the SOC well, to like 2.1 gigahertz, which okay. it caps out at like 56C with this teeny tiny little tower cooler on it. That's not which too is bad, very good. actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually very good. Considering for, for, like a, for a $40 hate computer, yeah. Yeah, it, considering it used to hate, uh, used to hit 80C without the little tower cooler. That's very good. What to do? That's very good. Is, is it at that point where I'm like, okay, if I had to desert island, I can do it. Oh yeah. This. Okay. It, you absolutely can. And uh, once you put box eighty six on it, which we'll talk about in the show. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good segue. To whatever Jordan's going to come up with. I, I I I got nothing this week. It's the Steam. I knew you were going to do that to me. It was preloaded. <laughs> ha. <laughs> SSL fixes and runtime stuff, man. We got a couple updates from the Steam client, Peter. This one, uh, there was an issue uh, apparently on Debian and Open Mandriva, of all things. They mm -hmm. were having issues uh, with startup failures with SSL symbol problems. That was sorted. But the new hotness, the big news. They're still doing work on pressure vessel, man. That's their uh, valves containerization tech. That, you know, it's definitely, yeah. man, this is game preservation is what this is going to be in, you know, a decade, two decades. But they've managed to shove VDPAU, which mm -hmm. is NVIDIA's uh, custom silicon for video acceleration, and VAPI, the VA API for AMD, into the container. And they got some other stuff uh, better mechanisms for what comparing the runtime libraries and yeah that's pretty cool man i like to see the work continue yeah they they were talking about that in that presentation we covered a while ago about like the difficulties of getting the video drivers operating under a containerized environment i think honestly i think microsoft may have had the best approach here where like they they, they just hacked up like a fake device to expose the raw gpu and like make a fake driver for it that all it does is it just passes the direct x commands to the host gpu maybe they need to do something like that with the vulcans i i, I don't know there once once you get into the weeds of like physical resource sharing and containerization it gets a little fucky that's a little that's considerably above my pay grade but you know it's yeah. it's, it's good that they're trying to get it working i mean mm -hmm. it's going to be necessary uh, give, given like I, I i don't know like a even like a like a worst case scenario of like everything switching over to wayland you're going to need like something to run things with compatibility libraries that may not be supported in the right. future mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like hardware drivers, GPUs, and ev literally everything else. If you have a piece of software that needs to run in a container that needs to access hardware, whatever it may be, on the system, that, it's always going to be a bit finicky to get working. And um, we think about it, Ben. It, having everything in a container, and especially when you start thinking about using Proton and stuff like that, because. Yeah. I was recently <laughs> bit by, you know, an update to the Steam client that knackered our uh, Wolfenstein. So I had to like roll it back to a 3X version of Proton to get it working ultimately. Mm. But having everything nice and bottled up, you know, for the kids, you gotta do it for the kids, and man. It, for native games, 
as well, because if you go back and you try to run like an old native Linux game, it's going to be difficult. And uh, yeah, so having that container is probably going to be the best way to ensure that those old games keep working. Yes. But what if you want to play <laughs> new games before they're released? Well, then you got you got an option now. Five years later. So this is from Xpaw, everyone's favorite. I want to say Trader? Um, because he was the guy who was running um like uh, Steam stats, and then turns out, oh, he was actually being paid by Epic to give a bunch <laughs> of information Spy. to them. Yeah, Steam Spy. Um but uh yeah, so he uh, apparently Valve has shipped this feature now. You can request access to betas uh via the store page. Um it's a good feature, it's a little late. Um you might you might ask like what is the difference between this and early access? This would allow this would effectively allow you to have um essentially a a game and beta branch that people can opt in uh basically all on the store page instead of having to go to the right click your guy um enter some password for the beta Wait, that they gotta are, are share you, somewhere are you daring or do you dare try to imply that this is less friction free than find an obscure post in their forums that links <laughs> to their discord for a pinned topic in one of the channels you don't know about and maybe get an email no, a month later? No. That, that's the way games should work yes um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to put the work in in order to play Damn kids video with your games. buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, splitting out the early access from the betas, probably a good idea. Mostly because we've at seen at least one game that uh, finished its early access run. And everyone's like, oh, it's out now. No, 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 no. It's in beta now. It's like, what the fuck? Well, so seriously, the, what in the, the actual fuck? The thing that popped into my mind is they're rolling this out because now they're going to start rolling out the new artifact updates. Mm. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, people should be able to opt into the beta if they want to play the new fancy artifact and not the old crusty artifact. You I, know, don't, I don't know what the difference between these two games one are. Of the but... things, how different is this to just going into properties and going to the betas tab and like just. Uh, I, 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 I think that th with this, this, this is just you don't a, need to buy the game. Ah. You request access to the beta. Okay. That, that, that too. And also, like was mentioned, try, trying to find some Discord post with the beta key to opt into the correct branch. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a lot more smoother of a workflow. You can just say, hey, go to our Steam page, opt into this beta, blah, blah, blah. Do you think I, um, it'll work for the games that I'm playing on my Raspberry Pi? It very well might, because that's in the Steam client. So yeah, Tom's Hardware has a little post links to all this stuff. Is in our show notes. Um, x86 emulation on a Pi. Uh, you can actually get some Steam games, native uh, Linux Steam games, running on a Raspberry Pi. 32-bit ones specifically? 32-bit <laughs> ones. Uh, running under uh, running under an ARM emulator uses Box86, as uh, Pedro was hinting at earlier. Um, I mean, it, it's really crazy to see the kind of stuff you can pull off with sophisticated virtualization. You know, uh, in the article, they... they but I got to give uh, Tom's hardware a little bit of credit because pseudo nano, I don't like to see beginner's guides when they're like, oh, just use VI. I'm like, that's mean. That's mean to somebody <laughs> that doesn't know what they're walking into. <laughs> Well, you know, it's like, how do I quit smoking? How do I quit VI is the one directly under that in terms of <laughs> yeah. most common searches. No, but um, but yeah, uh, they got they got stuff like um, Shovel Knight and Valhalla and a couple other hipster pixel games up and running. I mean, it's a Raz Pi. You can't do too much. And it is an ARM CPU X emulating x86. And uh, here's the thing. As, as someone who was embedded in the ARM world, I really, really, really hope the moral of this story is not ARM needs to just get better at x86 emulation, because then you just turn ARM into the wine of CPU architectures, and that's that's not what I want to see moving forward. Do you... I understand I understand it's kind of necessary considering the glut of legacy x86 apps, but... Mm. I'm, I, I think like a lot of people, man, I'm genuinely curious to see what happens with big ARM. Like when you have a large um, power envelope to work with, See what mm -hmm. they can pull that off. watt TDP on an yeah, ARM SOC. Like yeah, or yeah. Something like that. But then <laughs> or, again, or like a... I don't think NVIDIA will be up to that after they purchase ARM. I think they're going to double down into that. If only because if only like, haha, now we can make our own CPUs. Screw you, Intel. Let's try and fragment the market and then fail like we did with the Shield. Yeah, this is NVIDIA. NVIDIA usually doesn't make yeah, bad. The Shield didn't bad. necessarily fail, mostly because the Android TV one, like the console one, that's actually very popular. Pedro, if and it the did, tablet you would never know because I, switch. Pedro, I could hide that in the financials <laughs> by the Shield, 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 and Shield. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so technically the Shield succeeded. Which one? 
But, like two of them did pretty good one of them went on to become the switch and the other one is actually very popular <laughs> right 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 but like again again that's that's that that is that is a very narrow market segment compared to like i don't know i don't know regular ass cpus i, I yeah. love seeing stuff like this because being able to even 32-bit on a pi 4 you can overclock it just a little bit but pi 5 but, yeah. It's going the, to get the, the, better, is what I'm saying, man. The, the, this and, this uh, is when you're going to need the Evo 212 on your, on your, on your thing. Possibly. Like, you need the, full, the full-sized one on your Raspberry. Or, or, or you're, yeah, you're, you're going to have, like, that's when we get, like, uh, NVMe to PCIe. And, mm, mm, get the graphics card. But I love a good old-fashioned, just because I can, you know, a weekend experiment. Yeah, one of those. It'll work. Make make him kiss, Pedro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But yeah, it's no, all, man. Uh, listen, dude, I got a healing heart. Bring them over. We'll weld them together. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, no, once you actually do uh, the things in the article, like doing the overclock to 2.1, they managed to get theirs up to 2147, which uh, kudos. I think you got good silicon with that one because uh, this wouldn't be stable at anything above 2.1. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But it is. Uh, like all the 32 games that I threw at it, which kind of surprised me the amount of 64 bit games that are actually on Steam now, because I tried a few that I knew would be like fairly. Um, you gotta admit, like, they run pretty smooth in that 32 bit client valve. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. But yeah, no, once you. The, the hardest thing here is just building Box 86. That, that. That's yeah, the hardest com- bit. Com- compiling on ARM, <laughs> it takes a while. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Pedro, I know. No cash. <laughs> Pedro, it's a, it's a sad moment. A boy. A boy's all grown up, Pedro. He can go to yes. war. It's one year old. One whole year of Gamorous. Or Gamoros, I suppose. Well, uh, Gamora uh, is friend to children. Yes. Yes, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, it was earlier in the week. Uh, Gamoros was like, "Today is one year anniversary of Gamoros." It really and Gamoros does sound 19. like it should be battling Godzilla, doesn't it? Right, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> it, and, it, it, uh, yeah. It, it really does. Fl- Flaming turtle. He like tucks his head and his arms in, and then like fire comes out of the holes and he spins around. Yeah, but well, they I, I have. Mean, uh, the updated list of the new software and it comes with linux 5.7 mesa 20.13 and nvidia 450 57 which are like the latest stable builds or they were at the um the time of announcement and uh, the big one like the big difference between gamorous and uh, say setting up your own ubuntu with a steam os session is that it includes steam tweaks and Steam Compositor Plus and Steam Buddy, which are like specific tools designed to work specifically with if you set up a machine to run with only big picture mode. And yeah, admittedly, I'm uh, I might have to try it if the uh, Steam OS ever decides to you know, update cock up somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like we 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 were a little skeptical a year ago when mm-hmm. we started talking about Gamer OS because it was like it's not Arch Linux; it was built originally on there, but it's a different thing now. Um, I, I I mean, I gotta say, congratulations! You made it to the year mark. That's uh that's a hard thing for a lot of projects to yep. actually get to. Sticking with um, it, man. That's that's yeah. the hard part. Yeah, they um and the the other the other thing that uh, Gamera's does uh, that other uh, Steam operating system things don't is they provide a list of games that they guarantee to be working, which I guess they're they're going it's out a of Steam their way. Curator. To, yeah. <laughs> it it is a Steam curator slash operating system slash toaster. Better love story than the Steam whitelist. Remember that Valve? Mm, like yeah, once, in a while. <laughs> maybe twice a year. Two and years and ago. then they're just like, yeah, fuck it, Proton DB. <laughs> they're they're doing it for us. <laughs> so now we get to have my favorite segment. I like to call "Getting Told You," but really, this is no surprise to anyone. But I had to throw it into the show. I have reasons. Don't worry. This comes from PC Gamer. Uh, Rocket League going free to play. New players will have to get it. Oh, you know what? You know what I'm about to say, audio listeners. The Epic Store. Yes. <laughs> If you already own Rocket League, you'll get over 200 items that are worthless, and your Steam copy will continue to work and get updates. For now, and I'm going to say, if you're if you're on Windows, 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, is, this was easy to suss out uh, when this was first announced and everyone had their panic attack because predicting Sweeney behavior is not difficult, man. What actions will make the most money? And, you know, I'm I'm guessing this is justified in Sweeney's head. It's like, you know, this has to be done for the greater good. You know, the greater good being we have to make Epic compete against Steam at any cost. That historically has never been a good reason to do anything. It never really works out. But you got to think about this. This is where, you know, I'm just trying to look down, you know, and my crystal eight ball is for you to play games, a game we're about to talk about in just a moment, influx of new players, especially when it's free. Okay. That brings the influx of grief mixed with a side order of derp. This is going to happen. Maybe a situation, maybe a situation that would call for maybe a little easy anti-cheat. Maybe just to help out with that, you know, we just gotta, we, we, it's something we got to do now that we're free to play. What a save, kids. Um, really, I'm bringing this up because, you know, that anti-cheat hotness gets, you know, smothered and covered over that. Well, Pedro, Jordan, do we have a pretty sussed out uh, feel for how easy anti-cheat in Linux hangs out and... 2020 as it stands right now. We're going to be talking about that in the uh, the news. (laughs) But no, I had to look up the uh, top 10 games on Steam because uh, at one point Rocket League was in the top 10, but ever since they announced that Mac and um, Linux were going the way of the Dodo and you would still, you know, be able to play it, I think it was up until September, you could still buy it on Steam up until September last year it started dropping people. And if you go look at the Steam charts, there's a... There's still, like, the highs uh, the highs and lows from, like, during the same day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a trend down because the highs didn't get as high as they used to and the lows were much lower. So, yeah, no, it's not even in the top 10 anymore. Yeah, it's all those Linux gamers. They got mad and they stopped playing Rocket League, <laughs> right? All eight that's, of us, that's, that's what That's, that's yeah. what contributed to it. <laughs> Man, all I'm saying is, I know you're playing it right now on Steam. Music Proton is working fine. You go, I'm just saying, looking at this statistically, there, there's a higher than high chance of it's eventually just not going to work at all. So get it in yep. while you can, is what I'm saying. I'm surprised it took him that long. <laughs> or, 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 or buy it on your console of choice. That's there the you go. There, there's your way around it, man. Pay, pay, uh, pay, an, pay another $50. Buy it on the Switch. And buy, buy it on a monthly subscription store. to play it online. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> hey, this is free to play done right, though. It yeah. is. And this is Fantasy Strike. We uh, threw chairs at it. And it is a uh, proper fighting game on Linux. Uh which isn't uh, Street Fighter V, but uh, still holding out for that one. Uh, by, by the same no. guys who did Street Fighter Two, so yeah, a lot of uh, people with very very good pedigree when it comes to fighting games. So it it is different in the way that uh, if you try to button mash, you're just going to have your uh, keister handed to you. But it is actually a very fun fighting game and it's going free to play and it has two new characters uh they have they're introducing quince and onimaru so there's two new characters which i'll actually have to try both of them because i did finish when i played the game i did go through like the single player uh campaigns with all of the characters and i ended up settling on the uh the dude with the uh the ghost uh person behind him but yeah, it's it's there. And um, the thing, again, I was on Steam charts uh, for the, uh, the Rocket League thing, and I decided to look up um, Fantasy Strike. It's like, oh, it went from an average of six concurrent players to 300 the moment they went free to play. It's like, huh, well, let's hope it holds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah, um, I, th- I think um, a lot of games like Fantasy Strike, a lot of indie games that are starting to get a lot of traction, kind of have to like get to this juncture where they're saying, well, I think all of the people who have bought this game are actually going to buy the game, but we need and we, we have a solid community, but we need it to grow. How do we do that? Well, we shift the we shift the financial burden onto the people who actually are like the diehards, the people who want to support the game and want to see it succeed. So we're going to we're going to give them the replay features. We're going to give them like fancy ladder features, et cetera, et cetera. 
cetera. Um, and have 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 it open so that people can actually try it out because that's how that's honestly how you're going to get new diehards and that's how you're going to get people buying skins and paying for the mm -hmm. fantasy plus thing um I, th I think i think it like it's a ballsy move but it's i think it's a good move if you if you want to make sure that as many people are playing your game and are thinking about your game as possible especially now that it has been established going free to play i think is an okay enough move maybe this also means that they're going to be coming out with a new game i don't know i don't know just yet because uh, I had fun with the game and it, it does what it says on the tin. It's something that you can get into and look at and like, okay, oh, it's not built around 3,000 or 30 plus combo move, you know, chains mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> Skullgirls. <laughs> yeah. I, admittedly, man, Skullgirls, perfectly good game. Too damn old to play it, man. I'm like, I, it, I, I, I can face the reality of that. This, this I could play it speed. in single player, but not multiplayer. And... <laughs> well, so like uh, to 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 that to that to that point, um, mm -hmm. to that to that point, I was watching a fighting game guy on YouTube, and he's like, "Yeah, Fantasy Strike is basically a fighting game for old people. It's for the people who were into Street Fighter back in the day, but then their fingers kind of degraded yeah. from like, yeah, that, that's what, that's what this game is. It is fighting games with all the bullshit cut down, so it's just prediction. Takes it uh, back to the core mechanics, yeah. which is good, and unfortunately, yeah. it's never really caught." A fan base, even a niche game like Skullgirls, has that dedicated, like, sizable mm -hmm. group. Maybe this is going to help them do it, though. Indeed. That so. would be nice. I, I, I hope so. It's a solid game, and it deserves to be played by a lot more people. Mm -hmm. So there's a Linux version coming. Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I've heard of uh, Linux Vaporware, but not Linux Vapor Wave. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, vector. <laughs> uh, oh, vector. Galaxy Braid. Yeah, so the so vector it's a infinite runner slash shooter jumper thing. Uh, they are coming out with a Linux version uh, with the latest update, which is nice. It's good to see that this uh, it's a free to play game, so you can try it out. Um, they have a yep. they have a support pack, so if you want to actually like support their development, you can just buy it. It's a Unity it's not, game. Okay, I'm sorry, you're making a big deal about. Tapping that export button, fun. I, um, I mean, to be it, fair, I, we're going to be talking about that in the new segment. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so here, here's the thing, though. At least the guy had the fucking good grace these days to fucking tap the export button as opposed to like, mm -hmm. yeah, still running Proton. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, I mean, Infinite Run and Gun, it could be fun if people are into that. I don't know, but you can definitely try it out. It is cheap as free. So there, there you go. What do you think about the uh, supported OSs? That's kind of brave, isn't it? Manjaro. It is. It's like Ubuntu and Manjaro. It's like <laughs> well, as someone who used Manjaro. I like, used oh, Manjaro for two weeks on the Pine Book uh, when I got it, and immediately, like after I did the first um, update, there were a bunch of updates. Uh, I did the first update, rebooted, and things started breaking. It's like, all right, it's Manjaro. That's fine. It's based on Arch, so let's figure out how to fix this. So I started fixing things and I fixed like the obvious ones and then I rebooted again to do all the fixes and I got a black screen. It's like, oh, God damn it. All right. I <laughs> so I, I don't know. We, we, we've seen Manjaro on a couple recommended OS lists. At least it's not open, Suze. That The guy who put that on the recommended OS, that's a bold choice, Cotton. <laughs> I mean, Suze, I think as far as support goes, would be easier to do because would it, you're not would it, targeting a very fast moving target <laughs> but but you're you're relying on bug reports from people like mr fox dog and mirror so yeah. mm. okay the bug report from foxy i take it from mirror is like did you touch it i don't know man <laughs> you see that that would require you know to have a system in a workable state to the point where you could file a bug report Indeed. <laughs> one new game this week uh from the very very fine folks over at devolver digital right yeah. indeed yes. um carrion we we fucked around with the demo of this a while ago because they yeah, put that did. out it, it was basically play the the carnage symbiote the game or like be the yep. thing from finally well, john carpenter's for thing. once you get to play the good guy indeed <laughs> um so it, it's out you can pick it up for about 22 bucks it was all right from what i played of it um and it, it's definitely a different type of game because it's it's not like your standard metroidvania you are the monster in this case well i always to... think about it man it's like you're chilling out on your planet doing your your planet type stuff and some fuckos show up I'm like no yeah 
What, Basically, what, you get to play as not the ha the uh, asshole humans. I'm just saying, <laughs> listen, man. If you if you gave painted that dude blue, James Cameron would show up and film it, and people would want to make a Disney ride about it. Yeah, um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it's it's available. You can play it now. Um, you can pick bucks. it up. It's li Linux native. It's it's a little it's a little pricey, but like. Uh, it, it it did have a does it still have the demo no they took that down okay um yeah yeah but you know if 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 you, if you want to stretch yourself and be a giant goop monster that pilots humans and assimilates folks this is this is, this is the game for you <laughs> you get to play the thing from the end of inside which yeah. i still need to you, play. <laughs> you, you you get to play the thing from john carpenter's the thing all right Throw coming a nine inch nails on in the background would be great yeah <laughs> Coming up next, they got EAC working on Linux for a hot second, then, then, then it broke. Also, cross-compiling things on Unity Why don't not? work so well. We're not Jason Muse, unfortunately, but we are going Fuck to give you. you the news in a moment. <laughs> Muse has really stepped Put up his streaming game. in my Come hand. <laughs> But well, yeah, no, before we get to the news, we do need to uh, give Jordan center stage for he will take off his clothes. He's and, a jolly um, good fellow. I, I ask I you mean, to I, uh, give us money. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you my jungle loves. Oh, -E -O -E -O. I think I want to know you. <laughs> yeah, I, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com to make me stop singing. <laughs> Put your mouse over the support button. We got, we got Amazon affiliate links under the affiliate links. Right, I keep I keep forgetting that thing exists. It's not. Yeah, it's like I don't. It's, there. it's like I don't even. Studio. Hang on, it's been a while since I've creeped on yours, Jordan. You got anything? For I've, me I've, I've I haven't updated mine in a in a good while. Uh, just it's like, your uh, regular. Get <laughs> mass. CPU. <laughs> CPU. <laughs> NVMe. Where's some the motherboard books. though? <laughs> yeah. I think the mother. I think I took that off because the motherboard got delisted. So it's. Patreon's um, mousies. Uh, like I said, I, I'm waiting for the price on the other one of these to drop. <laughs> yeah. Hooks. I, <laughs> hey, come on. You don't want to deny a boy hooks. Um. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. So yeah, head on over to our wish. You know what? If you, if you, if you buy stuff off our wish list, you get to be a glowing, glary name behind Ben's head. It's great. If you buy something off the studio wish list. Yes. <laughs> let's yes. make that very clear. You need to put sure. a, you you need like a oh that's what you need Jordan like a torn out piece of cardboard stapled up. Nori has a chalkboard she's not using. <laughs> Here's a, nope, that's a too small piece. Here's a torn out piece of cardboard. See, <laughs> you, you, it won't be as cool as this one. This one we will shame you for your fiscal irresponsibility each and every week on multiple shows. Indeed, but the best way to support us <laughs> is to is. head on over to patreoncom yes, uh, Um You get a bunch of cool stuff with that uh, for as little as a dollar a week. You get access to our Discord. You get you can get some show note access. You can get some game RSVP access. You know we're going to be playing some Left for Brad later tonight. Oh, Maybe you I want to join this in. Son. Last Ooh. week, somebody was like, "Yo, uh, I want to be an executive producer, but the slots are all full. We got one slot." one slot open right now so Ooh. hope you didn't skip over this point <laughs> indeed but you know uh get, getting getting show note access also gives you the ability to add to the show notes if you want to call us out on our bullshit if you want you to can straight up talk shit to us while we're trying to do a show be like yo 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 this yes. is wrong or i agree with it we will argue with you too directly in the show notes indeed it's or pretty great you can just straight up creep you know, it's always fun to sit back and watch other people type. You're like, oh, what are they talking about? If if you, if you want to be a super creep, you get access to the pre pre super shows in, which lets you sort of in on our production meeting an hour before we go live here. <laughs> That's a good for, way to call it, for, just like random spitball bullshit slash comedy hour. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, we're we were talking about whiskey tide pods. That's the one thing I remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you can get yeah, a video version of that if you're brave. You can so, sometimes if the, if the technology is available. Uh, we got a store store at nextgamecast.com. Buy some t-shirts, buy some mouse pads, buy some stickers, buy a coffee mug. Yeah, it's so fashionable. Just go out in public with the use me penguin on your chest. You should mm -hmm. wear it occasionally. Have you watched it since we've last spoken about it? I I have. It's on. It's in the bottom of a laundry bin somewhere. I, mm. I, I gotta fish it out. It's collecting flavor. Indeed. <laughs> delicious, delicious laundry flavor. It tastes like a Tide Pod. You should stuff it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's uh, a joke. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's yes, yes, joke. Uh, right. 2019 was pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then 2020 <laughs> happened. Oh, boy. 2020 was like, hold my sake, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's get into the news, though. Indeed. Um, so uh, this was a tweet from Dear Sexy Ethan Leaf. And um, he, he's, he's uh, going around porting games as he is wont to do. And he, and he says, turns out recent versions of Unity make it real easy not to go multi-plat burst. One of their libraries is incapable of cross-compilation. So even if everything is totally portable, you still have to set up your whole project with the Linux editor, you know, that unreleased thing, in order to attempt to build. Now, as it turns out, uh, if you scroll down a little bit, it is uncovered that there are uh the latest version of unity does have a cross compile uh version of burst that is able to cross compile but as ethan does say yeah good luck getting all of these other unity games to you know update and push out a linux build because that's that's not going to happen that's mm -hmm. kind of the problem with unity updates is especially when people do click export is once that's out they don't really go back and touch it yeah. maybe if there's and, uh just a minor point uh burst is the compiler mm -hmm. ah their their mono yeah. C sharp compiler or whatever whatever you want to call yeah. it. You know I can almost and, understand uh, the logic behind that. Out. I almost can. Of like you know what you should at least get this compiled on. The, fire up your VM, fucko, and. I I mean, cross compilation works. It is it is a hundred percent a thing. Unreal Engine four supports it. Godot supports it. Um, it should be a thing that your engine does because like you know what you should. I, I'm of the opinion you should be able to develop your game on whatever operating system you want, mm -hmm. but because because that that's personal to you. But you know, if you're if you want to support other platforms, you can cross compile it. Just don't don't test it in a VM. Actually, install a Linux and boot up the game. Install that's all, that's Seven all Linux. <laughs> install CentOS Seven because that's the most up to date. Linux <laughs> I did that. You can you can find on the internet. Seven point three, baby. I think they're on seven. Install now. Debian. Just Debian ten. If it works on that, it'll work on everything. <laughs> Doesn't work on Puppy anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, we do have an update about an easy anti-cheat. That wasn't just a bullshit tease in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it kind of was. Uh, Glorious egg roll. Uh, well, he was you very know, much you know, working. Get that, that is the... Uh, Sign of some good news to come, isn't it? Welp. Yeah, it's like Welp. you start a tweet with Welp. It's like, yeah, anti cheat was working. They pushed an update today that was on the 24th uh, that broke it on Linux for all the games it was working on. So, yeah. Uh, remember when I said that if they pushed out an update now that broke it, that that basically meant that they were deliberately uh, just uh, trying to dick <laughs> Linux people over? That, so, yeah. that, so, hang on, no. <laughs> Lobo, you got the offensive tweet warning. I click it and said, screw you. Well, I, I, I mean, it's, it's not targeting Riot Games, so they have to censor it. Um, no, but, but like, here, here, here's the thing, though. I, I, don't, I don't think they're trying to dick people over. I'm, I'm going to go with the Hanlon's Razor explanation. Never attribute to malice what you could equally attribute to stupidity. But that's the thing. Magical black box, get a black box. If you're going to try and support something that is trying to do weird shit with the operating system to detect whether or not you're cheating and you're trying to work around that the minute they update it i would expect everything to break this is this is a worse moving target than wine itself i don't so, think anyone looked at that and went well, that's going to be short it, 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 it's going to be cat and mouse <laughs> perpetual period i mean it, it, it and eventually yeah. uh, it's an easy game to play for eac it's like yeah they'll get bored eventually which well and yeah, the, the the only real solution here is to get the EAC people to come on board with actually supporting Linux, which at one point they were going to do, but mm. you know, that was that was back when the new mutants was supposed to come out. And uh Well, you know, <laughs> here, here you, you could fight fire with chainsaws. What what if they just start doing um pre compiled binaries and like, okay, no source. Make at least give them they, a... if they release the pre compiled binaries and they give it to Wyatt and say, Here you go, this makes EAC work. All I'm saying is there, make, it, make them work for it. I, 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 mean, I don't the know. The kernel good. includes pre-compiled blobs, so... I mean, it would, <laughs> uh, it yeah. would be just like an AMD driver. Oh, man. I, I, do, I do not like the idea of, like, a EAC <laughs> kernel-level module. That, oh, I don't that, either, No, not but... on the kernel. In wine. Right? In wine. Um, <laughs> No, no, no. See, this is how it's going to work now. You put the idea in their head, Pedro. You have spoke it into creation. Abracadabra. That, this is what's going to happen now. It's your fault. 100%. Wait a minute. 
What, what, what's that light? Is you want to say something to the page? Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> oh, <laughs> minus you, you said a bad no, no swear word. Oh, oh there goes monetization. Oh, Twitter is going to censor us now. Epic Game Store. <laughs> I just want to bring this in because this is like, man, these two belong together. Uh, has officially integrated GOG into Galaxy 2.0. So that's two stores without native Linux clients. Another digital marketplace joins the growing GOG. Well, Epic, that is sure as hell one way to get a chopping cart in your system now, isn't it? I don't mm -hmm. know. Does this mean anything <laughs> to us? I don't really think it does, but I was like, oh, okay. I, 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 I mean, I... I, I... I, I like I, the the quote from Tim Sweeney here is like especially rich because it's like well digital ownership is a mess in this day and age if you own the game on one platform you should own the game on all platforms right says the guy who's like locking shit into the Epic Store yeah th that's the guy who's actively buying and creating so so here here's here, here here's the thing though like in principle <laughs> I agree with that statement I think yes you know. The, the, the current state of digital licensing, especially when it comes to software, is really bad. You should be able to buy the thing once, and the license should be able to apply it to whatever platform you're on. That I, I, I don't think anyone objects to that idea in principle. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, the, but again, this is not what Epic is doing. You are saying one thing and doing another, and it smacks of just super disingenuousness. I will it say, is. though... How long do you think it's going to take for Epic to buy out us, uh, to buy out uh, GOG? Because that means that uh, the, the Witcher 3 or the Witcher 4 or whatever is absolutely never going to get a Linux port because it's going to be it's going to be under the Epic banner now. I mean, they both hate Linux for different reasons, but they both hate Linux. So. You know, I, 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 I don't think there's any passionate hatred. On, it is permanent disinterest. I'm like, that's. We don't have to worry about that. You, you if, you, if, if you can cut a 25K check to Strider and he handles all your Linux stuff for you, that, that's all you need to do, right? <laughs> See, we're good now, guys, right? Huh? Yeah. Huh? yeah. We got a shopping cart with GOG, though. Go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on GOG, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. See, I don't know anything about GOG because... Well, I, I want to use GOG. Here's, here's like that weird Linux dilemma for me, but... There's no client, and without a client in 2020, you don't fucking exist to me. There's no client, and they're actively still uh, discouraging developers from uploading their Linux versions to their store. So yes, but 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 you see, <laughs> fuck that. L Lutris has GOG integration, <laughs> so you know it exists under Linux now. <laughs> well, I mean it does, but you're looking at that the same way as you're looking at EAC. Man, they flip a bit. That shit's gone. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we, we, this, we will, we will watch this with a very close eye. Cause like, I can see the snowballing into something way, way worse. I but... just wanted to bring it to people's attention, but Fedora <laughs> is doing a lot of guns lately. They, they are. are. And if I need it, as if I needed more reasons to use Fedora, God damn it. Um, DXVK is going to be the default, uh, DirectX 11, DirectX 9, etc cetera, etc cetera. it's basically replacing the built-in wine d3d it's going to be all the xvk in the fedora builds of wine hmm. god Ma damn it fedora you keep doing things right god fucking yeah. damn it <laughs> maybe so th this this is on the proposal page it has been accepted but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in uh 33 or not um mm -hmm. but like i mean it's not it's not a bad idea uh dxvk is the more performant of the directx implementations yes. the guy makes the use case series like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like provide benchmarks because you can just google dxvk benchmarks and you will see the delta the performance delta is very clearly there I mean, I can I could see an argument that says, well, you know, Steam and Lutris are already bundling Dixvix, so our wine should be vanilla wine. I I, I can I can see that maybe as it will create a lot of unnecessary updates for the DXVK package. He does provide the 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 solution here does provide a way to pull that back if you want to use um, the built-in uh, DirectX support in wine. It's just a exclude flag you got to throw in your yum config. Um, but yeah, like th this is another one of these moves that like Fedora is making. They, they integrated Ratbag by default, so like the gaming my stuff is supported. They're they're trying they're trying to make it easy to like get games There's up and running. There's a proposal for uh, yeah, and same type of on the release for thirty three or for ZFS to roll, mm -hmm. or uh, have some some yeah, kind of support for it. Yeah, to definitely be in there. And if you're th looking for a daily driver, Fedora is a kitty cat compared 
to what it's, it used to be. It's I mean, the boring mm-hmm. Linux now. It really is. It is. Just... It is a Linux distribution. You know what? <laughs> it's a little too adventurous for me. It's too adventurous for production. I'm going to say that. Sure, but like as a daily driver, it's probably oh, as a fun. daily driver. Oh yeah, again, it's going to get <laughs> like it's just desktop work. Linux. Hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Give it a try. So X Plane is back in the news with us. Now there's beta 16, but in 15, they were doing a couple of things, man. Because they fixed a Vulcan bug that would, you know, it exposed a few new ones and other developers' plugins, but those have been sorted in beta 16. With a fix, the NVIDIA card's currently losing about 1.5 milliseconds of GPU time. Why is this important? This is explain, man. Come on. People got thousands and thousands of dollars in their system and their monitors and all that. But the bug fix uh, for wrong reflections at Vulcan... They're working on it because they found the cause of the performance issue. It's just not fixed yet. I just want to say good on them because, you know, several, several months back. We're going to get everything over to Vulcan, man. You know, fuck DX12. It's not cross-platform. We know we have a lot of people playing on Mac. We have people playing on Linux, people playing on Windows. And let's roll this out. And they've just been steamrolling through it, you know? Like we, we're not exactly sure how this is going to play out, and they've got it rolled out. And now they're just getting the last little bits taken care of. I, I just want to say good job. x I'd play it if I had, like, some of the insane setups. Can you imagine what their display <laughs> management is? Like It's usually a triple screen. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's you, min, 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 the, minimum triple screen. Yeah. Sometimes you want to get the two up there. So this, you can get is the, yeah. this is what I'm getting at. Because like the display <laughs> management in the core of the application of Exploit. Because you start three and I'm like, yeah, that's a starter setup. Um, I'm talking about the ones <laughs> that are wrap around with extra side and they have displays set up for controls and touch paddles and they have hardware oh, yeah. switches and shit. Yeah. Um. What? what it, it 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 is crazy. These are people who like want to fly a plane but don't want to get a pilot's license. Mm-hmm. Uh. So uh, because of the Vulcan upgrades and because of uh, the bug that they exposed, they are saying third party plugin developers check your shit. We're expect a release of uh, eleven fifty Spoon TM, but mm-hmm. um, but that that change is going to be in master. So get get your plugins ready. Um. Yeah. I mean. Th- I'm sure Dick Thomas is pleased. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, that's the thing about the third-party plugins. Games like these, and uh, yeah, it's X Plane and uh, Microsoft Flight Truck Sim. Simulator. Come on, yeah, tra- Truck train simulator, simulator as well. They're like a bed for piling on mods, and people go crazy with the mods because hey, maybe there's that there's that one plane that they want that's not in there, so they just throw in the model and the necessary uh, adjustments to the um, config files to make it behave it, as it would. Is is, is, and, is there a mod that wraps Macho Man Randy Savage's skin around the plane? Is there so a mod that lets me fly my truck? Dude, <laughs> space truck? Uh, yeah. Uh, space truck, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know about flying trucks, but there's a bunch of mods for um, American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator that, like, introduce regular uh, everyday cars instead of the trucks and they didn't disable the uh attaching of right, the big I, 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 I was gonna say do, 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 is it is it like you're driving around with a porsche with like a fucking tractor trailer on the back yep. of it <laughs> i never get into american truck simulator or just truck simulator until I, I i went down the rabbit hole of carrying the big pole mm-hmm <laughs> Which is the thing that's a competitive thing that people get into, and just I'm very impressed. I also want like truck simulator on Mars. Yes, ah. it's like low yeah, graph screw- truck simulator. Exactly. Yes. That'd be great. <laughs> the goat will be there. You're like, damn it! I knew we'd meet. <laughs> and 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 I don't, I don't know the whale. Except that's on the moon. I, I don't know. The act, man. Uh, <laughs> like Spocker, like, the shocker, and the mapper. The- Yes, Jarshock Mapper. So this is this is a big thing. Um, it's on GitHub. The links to that's in our show notes. You got to read through a lot of it. The 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 short and nitty gritty version of it. This is a reference implementation for a library that supports all the various uh, gyro and pressure sensitivity stuff in modern controllers like the Joy Cons, Switch Pro Controller, DualShock Four. Um, with the idea that you can implement this in your game, you can have all of the gyro features, you can have all of the pressure sensitivity features. It provides a way to identify what all the signals are, map them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's still under development. Uh, there's some stuff 
that's not quite working just yet. Um, they mentioned that, you know, Bluetooth uh, is what these controllers use to connect. So if you have a slow Bluetooth adapter, you're going to start seeing, um, you're going to start seeing some weird behavior, but that's just Bluetooth. They can't, the library can't fix it. One thing I'm definitely curious about, though, is how this relates to something like SDL, because SDL makes getting controllers working very easily because it implements everything as like an Xbox 360 controller, which this is not specific to support. So I'm wondering if you can actually integrate this with SDL. Are these two mutually exclusive? Because this offers a lot of features that people would find useful um, and it makes them cross-platform but easiest way to get a game up and running these days is straight up just make a window with STL get, handle some inputs so if these two can play nice this would be fantastic if not yeah I gotta admit I looked at this and my little reptilian brain was you need to put this in the show note and tell people about it but you don't fucking really understand what it's doing but hey <laughs> neat <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't think it would be mutually exclusive with SDL because you could have this handle all of the gyro and the accelerometer and the pressure sensitivity. Um, and then you could just map those inputs that this generates and create a new SDL uh, entry uh, for the uh, game controller database that maps those two buttons that already exist. Yeah, it, it, it's possible, but I don't know anything about the specific implementation of how this works and how it's expected to be used. So yeah. I, 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 I went with the generic statement. Maybe these guys can send us some hate mail and tell us yeah. more about their library. Yeah. Maybe they want to come on the show and explain to us why this is actually better than SDL. We Who knows? We promise not to eat car controllers. Ish. Nay! Oh, they do look Violence delicious. Violence no. 21 <laughs> is a... It is, and uh, Wildlands, it's that uh, yeah. Kaisar-style city builder type of game, and uh, they have uh, some new things. They have a, a, a much stronger mode. AI. Oh, jeez, now it's going to have hippies? Yes, I mean, it has you, peaceful you, mode, which was basically you, something that was already in uh, the Kaisar games. Like, I remember playing Kaisar 3 back in the day. And, Pit, Pit, um, Pedro, I got a question, though. Are you still using those little Indian CPUs? Do you want to you be a big boy and use the big Indian CPUs? <laughs> he does have a CPU uh, attached to his computer with big Indian. Yes, he does. Mm. I do, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is... Uh, it's over here in a blue box. Uh, the uh, No, the peaceful mode is actually really nice if you just want to like create and manage the city without having to worry about the AI coming to poop all over your cereal, so to speak. Uh, and that was like the one thing that I played in Kaisar 3, so very good job. I might actually have to give this one a try now. And um, you can, uh, if you don't want to do peaceful mode, you can actually pick which kind of soldiers uh, you can use in the attack box or that the AI can use in the attack box. So you can try and like, it's basically build your own Kaisar and you can set the field exactly the way you want it to either trounce the AI or to have a proper challenge and try and figure out the best way around it, it, yeah, no, it's very good. <laughs> cool. All right. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's one of those games How that I don't know enough me, about. <laughs> the what? How much is it going to cost me? Uh, nothing. It's open source. Oh. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I suggest someone go out there and try it. Perhaps. Coming up next, we're going to get Primal. It's not going to be a Primal Scream. It's not going to be too Primal Heavy. It might be a little Primal, primal Stream. <laughs> primal Stream. Nope, nope. Eject nope. button. Eject button. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Primal Light, Ooh. built by Fat Gen. It's done on the Godot engine. Ooh. Uh, you can pick it up for about 15 bucks US. What is it? Inhabit Krog! A mysterious blue creature in a red loincloth as he traverses a labyrinth of ladders, levers, traps, and monsters. Explore the nooks and grannies. No, that was a couple weeks ago. Of um, bizarre and evocative worlds where you hack and slash your way to victory, leaving a graveyard of grotesque bodies in your way, or bosses in your way. I guess. <laughs> oh, I guess in your wake, you monster. Mm -mm, Granny Slayer 2019. Let's let's. Go. Uh, we got we got to thank uh, we got to thank uh, Fat Gem. They did send us some keys. Thank you. So. Uh, yeah, so let's get into Thanks. it. Special how, thanks. It, how, 
How, how's it work on the Debuans? On Debian 10, man. On the man, come on, it should run on that at least. Uh, Debian Buster. Threadripper 1920X through 2 gigs RAM and VME drives powered by a 2062. Display this graphical juggernaut. I ran into a few issues, man. Uh, the first one right out of the box was when I went to go figure out what the hell you're doing with the controllers, man, because for the remapping, no, I did use the X-Clone. I had interesting options like button up. Well, face button up, face button down, <laughs> left, right, right, left, trigger, question mark. I didn't expect button prompts. I didn't. I didn't understand small studio, but don't bring this glyph bullshit in 2020. Okay. I was obviously able to decode them. and They were logically laid out once I figured out what did what, but I did notice, I did notice, uh, full screen, small issue. Now it launched in the correct monitor. That's good. My primary monitor full screen. That's great. Let's check out borderless immediately jumped to my third monitor. And windowed options consisted of by one and by two, which look a little teeny tiny at UHD. I'd like to see some actual resolution options in there, but I'm sure I could probably have drug it. I didn't care enough. Back to the controls real quick, though. You know, when you leave the game, you like w when you get dead, you know, the pre dead, well, post dead, uh, pre nope. And it's like, would you like to continue or save it? The, the controls are inverted on that because you have to hit up to go down. That's the only menu where that's there. That didn't confuse me, but it took a second. I'm like, what? This is not. Oh, okay. That was definitely a thing. That said, controls are tight. They work. I mean, you know, when you get a platformer, old school platformer, you're kind of looking for that. It delivered, man. I really couldn't shame them for anything like that. You did a good job with the controls. Um, Hipster pixel text only displayed for English and Portuguese. So if you speak in the Dutch, they're like, you don't get hipster pixel text, man. It's like hell of a luck, whatever, man. Just like regular plain. Same thing with like simplified Chinese or anything like that. That's nothing to throw against, but that was kind of odd to see it. It looks like something from the Mega Drive era, and it kind of nails that color palette, man. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. It has a soundtrack. It makes noises. Didn't really stand out to me, you know, stand out completely, but ah, whatever. You know, put on some aqua and go to town. Let's talk about the fun. I say during these shows, all the times, and especially during streams, game X, Y, or Z, shouldn't this have permadeath? I do. I do it for a laugh because it's 2020 and we moved beyond that in game design. Primal Light is a bit confusing since it has checkpoints. You might see some in uh, their bonfires in Pedro's video you see in the background there and a save system. But you make it to a boss on a level and decide to come back later. Be ready to start that level right back at the beginning. Fuck you checkpoints. Okay. I almost quit playing right then and there. But the lads over at Fat Jim, you know, they sent over the keys, so... I owed you a few more attempts to get good. And I tried and I failed for the most part. Granted, I got pretty good at speed running the first part of the level, getting up to that dragon boss. Then he killed me to death over and over and over again, several times. And I, you know, I didn't have the time or desire to speed run that level again. I was like, okay, I wasn't angry. It's like, I don't have the time to do this. I want to figure out how to beat him, but uh, you know, being old school authentic, it's going to limit your player base. I get it because people might be stuck at home right now, but we got shit to do. You know, I'm not seven years old anymore. I don't have like the one game from the rental for the entire weekend to hammer over and over and over. I don't, you know, maybe if you released like Game Genie DLC, that one, you know, save at checkpoints, I'd be down with that. I could skip some of the monotony of going through that because it's not difficult. The game's doable. It's get good doable. You can get over it and you can speed run it pretty quick once you figure it out. But let's go ahead and say this. You have the base of a good little platformer. You do. But it needs a lot of polish. My opinion. Before you go and say, hey, let's get 15 quid for this. Because at that price, at that price, that's the same price Hollow Knight is another three-person team that did it in their spare time. And that's just something you need to think about. But 
I hate to say this, man. I, I, I can't recommend this game right now in its current state, man. That sucks to say. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3264-bit with the 6700K i7 and the GTX 1080 Ti, it does launch. And like said, or like Ven said, like said Ven, right? Said Ven? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. The, um, the yeah, the, the color palette, the art design, spot on for like a Genesis game. It, they, they do a really good job of sort of capturing that. Also, the game is like under 500 megabytes. So, you know, you, ma- you manage that. Congrats. Yeah, it's like 200 um, megs. Don't you hate it when you're like, oh, this is accurate. And it's, why is it three gigs? Yeah. <laughs> um, it. I don't know. On, on my DualShock, I didn't run into any like weird controller issues beyond like when it tells you the prompts, it's like face button down, face button up. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, but you, you can you can sort of figure that out as you go. Um, it does really like controller vibration on my DualShock 4. So it was vibrating quite a bit. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Um, fun wise. So I, I, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. I do, I do not like old school uh, games. This this. If I had a if I had a complaint for this game, it is old school to a fault. It embodies a lot of like classic game design, um, that uh, especially inspired by like Castlevania. Like Castlevania One, I feel is sort of the biggest gameplay touchstone here. Um, and the 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 whole like late invisible jump thing, I didn't I did not grok it, and I got super frustrated. Can I ask you a question? Point, what was was up? Okay. Um. Do you think like because. You never had a nest. You never really. You you absolutely had no chance of growing up with Nintendo hard shit like this. Uh, I I had an OG Game Boy, and I had like Donkey Kong Country and Super Mario. I would say they play a little bit better, at least in terms of the jump mechanics. Oh, light this. years than like Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. And like Mario One. Yeah, I I don't have a lot of nostalgia for these things. Well, yeah, that's if, what I'm saying. I, uh, that's what I was asking. Really, what I'm asking is like. You don't have, and you didn't even like develop the mechanics to like play these things as a young age where that wire ring still hanging out in your brain meets. This is like, fuck this. A little, a little bit. I mean, I got, I got mad enough that I hit alt four a lot hard enough that I actually have like a burst vein in my finger. Um, yeah, this, this game, I don't know. I don't know. Certain games like trigger a frustration response that is pretty violent. I discovered that my temple is stronger than a dual shock four controller when I slammed it in there in a fit of frustration. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah. So the, the old school design here is it's, it's definitely present. And if you're a fan of that style of game, uh, this will definitely work for you. I, I did not like the way this game played. Uh, I found it very frustrating. I, I, I agree with Ben in the sense that, like, if I stuck to it, I could probably get good, but I ain't nobody got time for that. Um, I'm it's it this this is not the type of game that I'm willing to um, spend time to get good at, and like that's no fault of this game. It definitely does. There is definitely like a target market for this. I agree with Ben when he says that the checkpoints should actually be the save points and not vice versa. I think that that is uh, that is an old school game design thing that was there as a limitation of the hardware. Now that you know we have modern computers and consoles and stuff with persistent memory, shouldn't really be that big of an issue. Um, I'm not gonna go much further because uh, I've I've said my piece. I'm gonna give it one chair. Sorry guys. Good on you for putting out a game with Godot. Not my cup of chainsaw. Yeah, and over here with KDE Neon on the Ryzen 7 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launched. Uh, V-Sync is a bag of lies. It locks the FURPS at 60, not the actual refresh rate of the monitor, which would explain why it didn't look entirely smooth in, uh, here in uh, 144 hertz land. And uh, disabling V-Sync does nothing. The FURPS stay locked at 60. The soundtrack was varied, yeah, let's call it that. Uh, some of the uh, do, do you do you do you remember any music from there? Because I sure as hell don't. Like I did because uh, like in the uh, third stage, the the one you're looking at right now is the boss of the second stage. The that stage, uh, the soundtrack reminded me very much of Castlevania on the um, on the Mega Drive. Uh, not the Mega Drive. The, 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 um, can, well, there, there's there's the one Castlevania. Can game I ask you Drive. like a very important question, Pedro? <laughs> Yeah. Is that fan back on? Yes. Rattle, we can, rattle. We, we can hear it. Turn it off? Yeah, that's, that's Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, the um, Castlevania on the Mega Drive slash Genesis, uh, it was, um, it 
that's the uh, the vibe that I got from the uh, the music. But then the stage afterwards, it sounded very blasphemous. -y. So yeah, clearly the inspiration is very much on their sleeve with this one. And the controls for me were a bit weird. Apparently Jordan didn't run uh, into any of these issues, but with both the V1 and the V2 uh, DualShock 4s, it, um, it was having none of it. Uh, in fact, uh, if I shook it and triggered the gyro and the accelerometer, I could like move the uh, menu uh, selection cursor up and down. So it's like, oh, oh, someone bound the wrong, um, the wrong axis to the thing. And I could see in the options menu that if I touched it, it would actually go to like square triangle and whatnot instead of the face buttons for the Xboxes. So it's like, oh, so you do know that it's DualShock 4, so why are you using the wrong axis? I don't know. In any case, the um, Steam controller and the 8-bit do NES um, controllers, those two work just fine. So, yeah, the, there's there's just something with the DualShocks there. Um, and it's probably got something to do with the fact that the uh, Steam controller and the 8-bit do just get seen as Xbox controllers by Steam. So there's that. Admittedly, uh, for the fun... I was a little bit disappointed. I was kind of more ho expecting slash hoping this to be a metroidvania e type platformer, but it was not. It is a standard action uh, 2D platformer where you go through stages linearly and there's no exploration, there's no... Um, there's there's a there's, there's no, a little bit of it, but it's not like it's not at the forefront. It's not very there. little. And there's like one extra path that you could take in any of the stages if you want more actiony there bits or if you want more of, platforming bits. I'll stick up for a little bit. There's plenty of hidden areas. <laughs> like oh yeah, there there, there are definitely secrets. Couple of hidden like rooms. If, uh, <laughs> if, like uh, hidden walls. There, there's mm -hmm. Castlevania yeah. goodies in there. Um, for sure. Yeah, no, That's there's like a hidden room that has like an extra life or maybe an extra ability. But yeah, it's a room. It's not like a whole new area that you could explore. It's a room. <laughs> and the... I, I was expecting something along the Metroidvania lines like your Blasphemous, your Sultan Sanctuary, your Hollow Knights. I, I like those games. You, you give me one of those games and I'll be happy. This, I've been playing this since Alex Kidd and Miracle World in the Master System. I've had enough of this. So, yeah, that, that's a thorough meh for me. Two chairs. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it very much leans into like the OG Castlevania, not like the Simon's Quest Symphony of the Night style, where there's like no. a lot more emphasis on exploration. <laughs> I would say uh, Castlevania too. Well, uh, Simon, Simon's uh, Quest, Castlevania. No. Well, yeah, that, uh, but... I, I mean, I, I, I would say Castlevania 2 and Symphony of the Night have the most in common. I like how Jordan but... didn't know how to do anything when no one wants Trent to talk over him. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, 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 whatever. It's like, I'm confused. Uh, I like that it's done with Godot. I mean, if this is your type of jam, you'll really enjoy this game. I think yeah, that's it, fair to say, right? Yes. Oh, abs abs absolutely. If you're absolutely. looking for like an old school platformer in the vein of like OG Castlevania, this is this is this will give you that experience, hundred percent. Yeah, Without... and uh, if you don't really, uh, if you're not as disillusioned with just good old two D action platformers like I am, then yeah, <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> right on, right on. All right. Coming up next, why aren't anyone? Why isn't anyone why making aren't? open source games? Why aren't anyone making game open source Are now? Good. It, it do, does he? Yeah. It's the end of the show. We had a look at a Godot game this week, and um, it was disappointing, unfortunately. But hey, chances are you probably had a look at that game yourself, and you'd like to know how or you'd like to let us know how wrong we were in our assessment of Primal Light or literally anything else that we got wrong during the show because chances are we got a lot wrong. Maybe. Possibly. Um, maybe. 
Where can I go? <laughs> but I at least a seventy percent chance. Yes, but uh, if you'd like to point out exactly with timestamps, uh, <laughs> you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. LGC Weekly is usually the default selection and a little choosy box. So just fill it out and tell us what you think or what you don't think. Which I guess it's impressive because if you're not thinking, how are you typing? I want some it, of that. It, go, go to the YouTube comments and you'll find out. I was how. about to say, man, the internet has proven <laughs> that people are more than capable of typing without thinking. It, 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 it's, it's, it's like a jellyfish, right? You don't need a brain to function. You can just exist on the internet. Yeah. Uh, well, we, 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 got, we, got one, we got one bit of hate mail from, uh, from Testman. They're talking about free and open source video games. They say, how do we get all the people who complain how shit gaming industry is to play and also help develop free and open source games? I mean, that is the conundrum, right? Like, people are yeah. more than people are more than willing to complain about the state of things and no one is willing to try and work towards making that better um money 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 exa exactly money. well I'm, I, so there, there's money, money there's money, time money. there's effort i mean so like look, look at look at something well i mean zero eighty is a bad example because they have a lot of funding from like arts and yes. okay look, let's look, let's look at something like say super text card Okay. That that that's that's probably a better example for this, right? There there's there's active people. There are people. Actively I don't know why you it. have to bring the French into this, as always. But go on. <laughs> because je suis Napoleon. <laughs> Pierre du no, Map. You're Canadian. <laughs> je suis Canadian Napoleon. <laughs> um. Almost got a spit take on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, but like. Um. The, there, there's an active contra, uh, contributor there. Super Tux Picard is the base of several games on Steam currently. They basically yes. look like a pal. <laughs> Clearly. Um, <laughs> so, so why, why, why aren't people developing it? Um, there's a barrier for entry. You got to know how to program. Uh, you got to learn how to like make models or sprites or something. And a lot of people are passive consumers. They just want to consume. Mm -hmm. They don't want to produce. The people who are, who do want to produce are likely <laughs> engaged with these with these projects. Or maybe if they don't know how to get involved, maybe there should be some better onboarding. Sure, but it's the community is not going to fix it because we don't live in communist fairyland. We live in capitalist fairyland where you got you got to provide some sort of uh, monetary incentive to do stuff. So. I, I, I don't know. There, is, is there a good solution? I don't think so. I don't think there's necessarily a solution that would be deliver a satisfactory answer. Um, people mm -hmm. tend to start off, they learn, you know, fortunately, source available for Unity, Godot's completely open source, um, Unreal Engine. So people are able to get into it. I, I don't know if that's going to result in more open source games. I think one of the biggest things that have held back open source games is art assets. Yes. You know, yeah. because <laughs> there, there's something to be said with any artist, uh, which I'm firmly 100% behind is fuck you, pay me. Yeah, you know? otherwise you get programmer art. Well, Though, and, and, you know, that, if Minecraft is an example of anything, is that... Ah! can work <laughs> but 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 like the, you gotta you gotta look at like people trying to solve this solution there uh epic had released a ton of assets from uh unreal engine 4 mm -hmm. to to help speed that up there's the unity asset store i mean for 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 all for better or for worse that is the solution and there's 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 a lot of open source uh there's a lot of open source resources as well although they can be a little lacking they're a lot more focused on the uh 2d side of things than the 3d side of things unless you're making porn then you got lots of 3d stuff so maybe maybe <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe what we maybe the revolution maybe maybe what we need is just a revolution of open source well, 3d porn games what i'm trying to think of is like a sustainable open source business model for games because you can't necessarily sell support patreon would be like the closest thing maybe uh, or some or like github sponsors they have they have that now too um yes yeah. hmm. something to think about we would love to hear your thoughts on uh how we could go about helping pull that off or you know some brilliant ideas and uh yeah i think bring the sauce to the open source games no. <laughs> well, I, 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 well, I mean, like, yeah, I, I think the technology is there and it's good. It's just the willpower isn't there. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it's been nerfed down considering a hundred bucks gets you on Steam these days. Indeed. So, yep. Unfortunately. <laughs> that, that, honestly, this could be an entire podcast in and of itself. On that bombshell. 
We gotta cue the music. Thank you for showing up to watch this train wreck as it happens in slow motion every Saturday night, Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon if you're in Space Australia. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin on Mast. Linuxgamecast.com or come scream at me during the week in our Discord. Life comes at you fast. That's why I live in slow motion. You can find more of my words of wisdom on Twitter at the Burning Fool. I'm Jordan Spung. I did that in reverse order. Yeah. Pedro. And I am unaccounted for. That's F O U R on Twitter or just the number four on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Hmm. Which I don't go there very often. He doesn't. <laughs> if he can ignore it, he will. This is the Mateus way. <laughs> I focus on one thing usually. I think I'm, I'm, maybe I'm one track mind kind of guy. I don't think I accidentally learned any French tonight, but I think you rekindled as like shit. I can decipher some of this bullshit still. All right, <laughs> we, Fair <enough>. we, <laughs> make it fire, beautiful people. We're gonna roll some credits. <laughs> maybe. Au Is revoir. It? Boop. Salut. <laughs> the dark side of trine cycles. It's, it was certain. my first trine cycle. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they have one in trine too, where you gotta use the wizard. All right, we got, we got, we got to thank the party <laughs> patrons, the lovely, Thanks lovely people. Uh, indeed, Arthur and Empty, uh, ha, the, 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 uh, Mike, Mike G, G, the Ahonic, the Ahonic, <laughs> the Ahonic ha, Scott, Scott Frostclaw, <laughs> Drummer Seven, and Fox Dog, and the only Tiki. There's one slot left Ooh. if you want to be in that top part of the credits. Get, get there quick. Um, get a, what, what about the rest of our producers like Grayson and Jack and Grayson again? And Denver Denver Grayson. Nicole Den and Nine Bullets, Mike Kyle Linux Cast, Lutris, Ivandro, Master Dak, Gonzo 2000, Mr. Mangos, Jill and Steve, Linux New, Paul, the Steven, other Jordan, Simcha, Michelle, Christian, Faultless, <laughs> Mr. A. Hey, hey, I remember to put the Jordan's place in this week. Kim, yeah. Power gotta gotta plug PowerShell Linux. Gotta plug it. Nixon's Pyramid and Nixon's thing. Pyramid. <laughs> That's the thing. It will oh, melt God, yeah. your fingers off. Man, I, I posted that thing earlier in the week. The uh, the the deep fake of uh, Nixon giving the moon disaster speech. Oh. <laughs> I I yeah. saw the deep fake of like Elon with some kid rapper that I didn't know. And I was like, I guess that I don't have the context because get off my lawn. Mm. Dying of fire, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Nixon's back. Five dudes. <laughs>